Good morning. Welcome to our first medical grand round of the year. And this is also the first time that we actually use an online platform via Zoom to uh, include more people who may like to have social distancing while attending meetings. Um, as an oncologist, I like to be able to tell my patients that cancer is a preventable disease. Now, I mean, we already say that viral infection is one of the causative factors in giving cancer like hepatitis B, causing uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, um, pedicopector pylori related to stomach cancer, and human papillovirus giving rise to cervical cancer and then anal cancer and so on. Okay, so today we are very fortunate to have Dr. Wong, Kim Yao Andrew, to come and uh, discuss um, his very pet subject. Uh, he's an infectious disease specialist. He started off his career as one of the frontline worker in the time of SARS at uh, Princess Margaret Hospital. He was until recently the president of the Hong Kong Infectious Disease Society. Uh, last year, he left hospital authority and joined the private sector with his office, both in Central and Kim Sa Jai. Okay, uh, without further ado, I'd like to know what this six high resolution endoscopy is going to bring us. So he is going to tell us all the diseases that can be diagnosed by using the endoscopy. Dr. Wong, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Siu, for your introduction. And uh, a very good morning to all our audience on site and also on Zoom. And um, my talk is about uh, high resolution endoscopy. Maybe you, 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 the first quick read, uh, questions that you might ask me why I uh, choose this topic. Because in my uh, more than 20 years of uh, professional career of uh, taking care of uh, HIV patients, I have um, <clears throat> encountered uh, HIV positive patients who are on uh, antiretroviral and uh, And, uh, who comes down with uh, uh, anal cancer. And uh, a few years ago in one of the uh, uh, conference in the United States uh, uh, called uh, ID Week, which is the largest one for ID uh, community, uh, they talk about high resolution endoscopy and uh, uh, they, they, they uh, talk about it being the most common uh, procedure among the ID physicians in the US nowadays. And, and uh, I, I, just, I, I was uh, fascinated and then I uh, pursued uh, this uh, HLA over the last few years um, in the UK where uh, they, there is a referral center in London. And um, so I'm going to share the experience here. And so uh, today I'm going to talk about the disease uh, itself, uh, why it is uh, important, and also about uh, the endoscopy itself, and uh, what are the implications for the clinical practice. So uh, as an introduction for HPV, there are more than 120 types, of which around 40 types are genital, and uh, the high risk ones are around a dozen. They cause cancer, they uh, can cause uh, the uh, intraepithelial neoplasia and then progress into cancer. And uh, for low risk one, they do not cause cancer and uh, they cause a uh, genital wart instead. And uh, for the long genital uh, uh, HPV type, they can cause like a plantar wart, and, uh, which are more familiar to uh, us. So uh, HPV is ubiquitous. It's a very commonly uh, acquired uh, infection. Uh, in, in, it's the most common viral uh, STD. 
and is rapidly acquired after sexual debut. And uh, within two years of uh, uh, starting penetrative sexual activities, uh, <clears throat> actually around half of the men acquire HPV already. And even those uh, who do not participate in penetrative uh, sexual activities, they are prone to acquire. So, uh, but the good thing is, many of uh, these uh, infections, they will be clear with time, with, uh, uh, within like half years time, uh, by themselves, with a com uh, immune competent person. So this question got asked by me, by, to me, by many patients, and if I wear a condom, can I prevent HPV? The answer is the, for the area which are not covered by the condom, it cannot be uh, prevented, you know. It is only the area which are covered because it's spread through skin to skin contact. So that's why it's, it's also some interesting fact, uh, some uh, overseas studies they found uh, on the uh, penis of men uh, is as, as high as 90% of them uh, are, are harboring HPV virus, one from another. So it's a dangerous weapon, you can say. And uh, for <coughs> people with uh, poor immune response, this, in this group, that the HPV may persist and cause uh, the cellular change and causing dysplasia and then subsequently cancer. So <clears throat> the lateral history of uh, cancer uh, uh, progression would be acquisition of the uh, HPV infection and then followed by a low grade uh, change and then high grade change and then uh, cancer. And in each step of the way, there's a, a leeway for uh, regression. Actually, of course, all of us know uh, uh, HPV is related to cervical cancer, so much so that many, many people call the HPV vaccine as the cervical cancer vaccine. But actually, it's more than that. A uh, uh, gynecologist, but there is any gynecologist up here, and uh, we know vulval and uh, vaginal are also involved, and uh, and for men is also involved for uh, uh, penis and uh, anus, and so as women for the anus, and also now we are talking about oropharyngeal cancer, which is emerging as uh, one of the most important HPV-related uh, malignancy. So uh, these are the factors associated with persistent HPV infections, including multiple sexual partners, men who have sex with men, smoking, you know. Uh, so we have to urge all our patients uh, who have uh, this dyspatia to stop smoking uh, because they have a synergistic effect with the HPV and uh, immunosuppression of any kind, either by the disease themselves or by any medical uh, treatment. Uh, or people on oral contraceptive use, co-infection with uh, HIV, uh, multiple HPV types, or high-risk uh, HPV type like 16 especially, and 18. And this is a spectrum of disease caused by HPV. Uh, of course, we know uh, genital watch is mo most common, followed by the uh, uh, low-grade and high-grade uh, cervical dysplasia, CIN 1, 2, 3, and cervical cancer, followed by anal cancer and oral pharyngeal cancer. And uh, please note, in, among anal cancer, and actually it's more common in women than men, as uh, depicted by the pink color more than the blue color. And this is consistent uh, around the world and uh, in different cultures, you know. And uh, actually, the incidence of uh, anal cancer is uh, increasing over the past uh, three decades. And uh, this is the data from US, and uh, their rate is around uh, two, one to two per uh, 100,000 people. And uh, the general increase is uh, around two to three percent per year. And <clears throat> note that women is again more uh, commonly affected than men. How about in Hong Kong? Thanks to the cancer registry, these are the data, and uh, the, the red line again uh, depict the woman. And in Hong Kong, the rate is uh, in general uh, lower than in the West. Uh, it's around uh, three to four uh, per million 
and up to uh, six in the, in some year. But you can, as you can see, uh, there's a, a general increase in the trend. And these are the absolute number the, of number of uh, new cases. And uh, for example, in 2017, there are 10 and uh, 24 female cases uh, in the whole year. That uh, include all the uh, anal, uh, anal canal, canal and the perianal skin uh, uh, involvement in terms of the squamous type. We are talking about squamous cell here because the HPV only affects the squamous cell. So, uh, so is the, uh, the just, just trust, trust me, the crude rate and the age shredded standardized rate also increased also almost double over the past uh, one uh, and a half decade or so. And the mean age of diagnosis is around 66. And uh, also from the cancer registry, uh, the cancer incidence, of course, uh, the, the, the incidence of uh, anal cancer will be dropped by uh, survival cancer, but still you can see there's an increase in the uh, 10 years period of uh, more than 60% in uh, the, the, the gross number. So we know now uh, HPV is uh, contributing to around 5% of the uh, cancer worldwide as uh, Dr. Siu has alluded to. And uh, among these uh, uh, type, so because with, uh, of uh, HPV, uh, of these uh, nine types which are contained in the nine, uh, nanovalent uh, vaccine, they account for 90% of all the uh, uh, cancer causing uh, uh, types. And, uh, and, and as you can see, uh, in cervical cancer and anal cancer, they are uh, very uh, uh, correlated with the occurrence of HPV. Um, more so than the uh, oropharyngeal cancer, for example, because oropharyngeal cancer, they have other causative factors like uh, uh, smoking or, or long HPV types. And uh, for men, actually, uh, genital HPV preference is higher in men than in women in general, <laughs> maybe due to the sexual activity or other factors. Uh, and this is a blue bar uh, showing the preference is just like in the in terms of 50 to 70 percent across different age band and uh, whereas uh, the, the the woman uh, the, the in forms of the line is like in general lower and uh, this is another uh, pre-vaccine era uh, data and the, on the left hand side is the men uh, the the dark red bars are talking about the uh, high-risk HPV types and the uh, light uh, pink bars are the low-risk type. As you can see, in men, across uh, the, the lifespan uh, up to 70, you know, the, the HPV preference is still uh, uh, quite constant, you know. Whereas in women, uh, after the initial teenager years, they slowly decline. And also it's found that even for men who have sex with women, uh, there can be, you know, uh, anal HPV infection in, um, in, in around uh, 10 to 14% of them across the lifespan. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, due to uh, uh, anal intercourse as many people may have uh, this um, misconception. And uh, in terms of the, the types which cause uh, uh, the cancer, uh, so cervical cancer, of course, we, talk, we know the major killers are the uh, 16 and the 18, which account for over 70% of the cervical cancer causations. Uh, how about for anal cancer? And uh, this sample actually contains both men and women. And uh, of, again, uh, 16 uh, is, uh, is the most important one. Uh, followed by other types by 52 and, and uh, four, uh, 34 and, uh, and uh, others. And actually HPV DNA was detected in over 96% of these cases. And this is another study uh, uh, <clears throat> about uh, different uh, HPV types in people with uh, anal cancer. Again, number 16 uh, is uh, um, 
most important ones. Okay, followed by 58, 18, and 51, etc. So, uh, in terms of uh, anal cancer risk groups, uh, for example, we we take the general female population as the as uh, as the comparison group, um, and the woman with uh, cervical, vaginal, or vulva uh, uh, IN3, you know, uh, will be at higher risk already. It will be at uh, 13 times, okay? Uh, and uh, for women with HIV, they are higher risk and transplant patients and HIV negative men who have sex with men, HIV positive men who have sex with men are the, at the highest and highest group. So that's why in many overseas centers, uh, this is this group that they uh, start the screening first. Okay, for example, in the uh, uh, UK center where I work, uh, this, uh, the, the, the majority of the patients are belong to this group. But of course, they are doing other groups, as I will tell you, as I'll tell you later on. And for women, and uh, actually, the fact that they have uh, CIN3, not cancer, okay, will more prone them to anal cancer. You know, uh, in five to nine years' time, they have a one point six time risk, and uh, over ten years, they have five times risk compared to uh, people who have not uh, CIN3. And uh, and this risk also increased uh, with age. You know, as you can see here, uh, people over 70, they are at higher, higher risk, uh, uh, you know, with time. And uh, also, um, for not only uh, cervical cancer or dyspatia, but also uh, vulval vaginal. Actually, they are uh, uh, prone to women to more risk. Maybe it's due to the external uh, location of the uh, HPV viral infection that the spread will be easier from uh, the front to the back. And uh, the risk of a secondary HPV cancer after cervical cancer, actually um, uh, anal cancer uh, ranks as one of the um, uh, cancers. Um, actually for people who who's, uh, have treatment for CIN, and uh, they are follow up, and uh, the, their incidence of uh, anal uh, uh, cancer is as common as uh, cervical uh, CIN3 uh, recurrence. Also, we have to watch out for that. So, how about for immunocompetent women? Actually, of course, we expect uh, HIV positive women will have more HPV uh, infection and also more. Uh, 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 dyspatia due to the HPV. And in this uh, Lancet Infectious Disease paper last year, it was found that HPV infection of the uh, so surface is highly correlated with the anal uh, HPV infection, especially for the HPV 16 types. And uh, in women, actually, many women become very disillusioned after they, they were diagnosed with uh, anal AIN or uh, anal canal because they have never had uh, anal sex and it become quite shameful to talk about, talk about anal uh, cancer sometimes. But it was found that anal sex is not a consistent factor for AIN acquisition. And uh, an Australian study actually uh, found that the, after urination, the fact that some women are taught during early age to wipe from front to back to avoid UTI. This practice is three times uh, more likely the woman will have H uh, HPV at the anal canal. And actually, uh, some women, they are doing the dab pin uh, uh, to, to, instead of a white pin, okay? And uh, there's a reduction in risk of uh, with, uh, anal leopatia. And this is uh, something quite interesting. And this is the original paper. So how about for men uh, who have sex with men, especially HIV, the, the highest risk group, you know? We know uh, this group, them, they have higher incidence than the HIV uh, negative people. And also they present earlier, you know, uh, like 47 years old compared to 57 years old. 
and uh, it is uh, an observation over the past uh, 30 years of uh, the antiretroviral therapy that uh, actually many of these uh, uh, ACE uh, defining uh, illness they become less and less common as that and also the leukemia associated with HIV for example the non-Hodgkin lymphoma as a result of the uh, highly potent therapy but anal cancer did not decrease at all you know over the years despite the very uh, potent antiretroviral therapy that really makes the case for um, you know uh, screening for this uh, group of uh, patients and uh, this is the uh, um, uh, uh, incidence of the HPV uh, uh, infections among uh, H HIV negative and H HPV uh, HIV positive uh, women and men. The highest risk is still the HIV positive men, you know, and. <clears throat> And also, uh, type 16, again, uh, become uh, the uh, most important uh, culprit for causing cancer among these uh, uh, people with uh, anal cancer in this uh, meta-analysis. So uh, what are the risk factors for anal cancer? Um, this includes, uh, as talk about smoking, uh, previous uh, high-risk HPV infection, and also immune suppression of any type, including uh, immune, autoimmune disease, uh, SLE, psoriasis, and people with transplant, actually uh, they are, at, for example, five times risk uh, compared to normal population. And, uh, and for HIV positive uh, women, they are also at risk. And uh, the, actually is the lower the, the, the dear uh, CD4 on presentation, the higher the risk. And uh, And it's not only um, uh, the, uh, it's it also related to the kind of treatment that a person is on for all these uh, uh, diseases which require immunosuppressant. If, for example, inflammatory bowel, uh, autoimmune disease, and, and uh, which require uh, long term steroid use, or uh, asaparopine actually is a quite an immunosuppressant drugs. And I've seen in the UK many people with RA who came down with uh, these uh, anal uh, AIN. And um, so, and um, for for the medication in the center where I work, and uh, it was found that over five years period, around six percent of the delivery referral were people who were pharma pharmacologically immunocompromised patients, and actually the majority of them were women, and uh, and. It's uh, quite common uh, to have the high grade lesions there. Uh, in seventy percent of the patients who, who have uh, high grade lesions uh, during the uh, uh, follow up studies, and actually uh, five patients had uh, perianal uh, squamous cell carcinoma. And to summarize, uh, these are the factors which are associated with uh, anal cancer, which include smoking, uh, uh, anal sex, and uh, men who are sexist men. Uh, um, elderly and actually it's more common in men, female and, and men, and also women with uh, previous uh, cervical, vaginal or vulval uh, uh, dyspathia <coughs> or cancers, or people with uh, all kinds of immunosuppression. So we know uh, just uh, very briefly, uh, primary prevention would be by HPV vaccination and uh, we know um, our pharyngeal cancer has suppressed uh, in, in, in the United States uh, already um, uh, more than cervical cancers and, uh, in terms of the number. Maybe it's due to the good uh, cervical uh, cancer screening program there. And uh, so much so that uh, last month, actually, the U, uh, FDA has approved the uh, Gardasil 9 uh, one of the indications is the prevention of oropharyngeal cancer uh, in both men and women through the age of 45. Just uh, a little digression, but just want to convince you that uh, the, uh, the, the uh, vaccines is really effective in terms of uh, a prevention of uh, cervical cancers and also auto dyspathia. And uh, 
in all the follow-up studies, but I won't go into the details. They are, it's a very safe and uh, so it's a very uh, recommended uh, vaccine, especially before people have sexual activities. And so much so, in some countries like Australia, they also are uh, given it as a gender neutral uh, strategy. Both boys and girls are given. So the focus today is for secondary prevention because we are facing this existing uh, population who have not been immunized, you know, uh, the, the people in the uh, 2030s or, or even uh, up to 50s, 60s, you know, the, the, this group, most of them will have not been immunized and they have been exposed to HPV. And if they come down with some any sort of immunosuppressant condition or have history of uh, 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 genital uh, uh, cancer or pre-cancer or women, so they are at high risk. So what can we do to uh, lower their risk? One of the things is to, uh, uh, people talk about screening, you know, and uh, so what is a high resolution endoscopy? So when we look at the human anus, actually I, I got this little, little model here and uh, Actually, the human anal canal is very short. It's up to uh, like uh, four to five cm uh, for men, and in women is even uh, uh, more shallow. You know? And uh, <clears throat> we can draw an analogy to the uh, surface uh, uh, beyond uh, in the embryonic uh, development. And this is the zone uh, of uh, the rectum. Is the colon columnar epithelium. And for the anal canal, it's a famous uh, epithelium. It is uh, at the junction of this uh, uh, squamo, so-called squamo columnar junction, which uh, in which most of these uh, changes occurs. So we focus on this uh, uh, for detection of our anal intra-anal canal uh, pathology. Of course, perianally. It's also, uh, uh, it can also occur because the skin is also squamous. And uh, these are the equipments which are used. Uh, this is uh, from the UK center where I work uh, for the past few years. And uh, this is a coposcope. Actually, they, they we are utilizing the uh, magnifying power of the uh, uh, coposcope and then uh, use a coposcope to go inside the anal canal and then to have a look. And this, uh, we will stain up the area with uh, acetic acid and also glucose iodide to, for best, better visualization. So apart from the acetylite, as in uh, cervical uh, pathology, we also look for uh, abnormal vascular patterns, you know, because the uh, magnifying power of the coposcope will enable us to look at the vasculature of the uh, mucosa. So, uh, of course, uh, I'll, I'll talk about the perianal. Before we go inside with the potoscope, we will also inspect the perianal area after we have put the acid, uh, acid around the area to stain up the abnormal areas. And usually the perianal will be defined as a 5 cm around the anus. And <clears throat> this is a picture of one of our patients. And this is uh, uh, the, the view after putting the portoscope. And we have to look at, look for the whole SCJ, you know, but trust me, it is not a, uh, something that is uh, easy as in surface. In surface, you put in a spectrum and the whole surface is in front of you. But for <laughs> anus, uh, there are different folds, you know, uh, obscuring the view. You have to maneuver yourself and uh, it's really, the, the, learning curve is really steep for this procedure. And, and uh, you ha we have to look for the whole SEJ. And uh, this is the, the line demarcating the, uh, uh, this on the right hand side, the red, more red uh, area would be the columnar epithelium. And the uh, whitish one, which is stained by uh, the, the acid, acid acid with the squamous epithelium. And this line is the SEJ. Okay, I'll just uh, highlight some of the area. And we look for, look hard for any abnormal vasculature. For example, on the right hand side, 
uh, this is uh, the plantation, which we can see at the lower end of the uh, inner canal. And uh, a biopsy of this area showed a high radiation. Okay. And uh, the lower picture is the perianal skin. And you can see there's some um, whitish area with some uh, stain up with a abnormal vascular pa pattern. And again, these are the uh, high radiations on a biopsy. And uh, it's also important to look for multisonal disease. For example, for this lady who has a, a, a vulval hybrid disease, she also has a perianal uh, hybrid disease. And sometimes it can lag, you know, by years. I have seen people in UK, uh, a lady who had been treated for, for CA service for many years ago, and then she presented to her GP or a uh, uh, because of uh, anal bleeding, and then uh, the GP think is uh, due to hemorrhoid, but later it was found that she had uh, anal cancer. But that's why it's important to be aware of possibility of such and uh, do uh, appropriate investigation. So why is uh, HRA done to begin with? I think it's, it borrowed a lot from the cervical cancer screening uh, principles. Actually, like 50 years ago, when people start uh, anal cancer screening, like pap smear and the uh, uh, cock coposcope, there's no randomized controlled trial at that time. It was only after, after many years that they have done that, that they found it is a very uh, uh, efficient and cost effective way to screen for CA service. And actually, the equipments and procedure for this uh, uh, HRA borrow a, a large part from the uh, uh, cervical cancer screening. Actually, uh, I, I talk about um, the low, so-called low-grade and high-grade lesion. In general, for uh, high low-grade lesion, would be like uh, the um, terminology of IN would be AIN one, okay, and uh, also also for high-grade lesion, and it would be like uh, AIN two. Uh, usually, we we'll usually quantify it with whether P sixteen. Uh, is a uh, broad same positive, you know, if it is is a uh, high grade, okay. And for grade three, it's definitely a uh, high grade. And and people can use uh, psychology uh, to begin with, you know, before they do the potoscope uh, to screen for the abnormal cells. But it was found that the psychology actually it is at most like uh, seventy percent uh, 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 sensitive. So. Uh, Usually, whenever there's any any abnormality, people will go for uh, HRA for uh, direct visualization because HRA will allow you to look at the mucosa directly. And how about the risk of progression from uh, high grade lesion to cancer? And in CA service, is about one in eighty per year, and in people who have a high grade anal lesions it was around 1 in 400 per year. So uh, I've talked about this, uh, the, even in women, is, uh, uh, the sensitivity it for uh, psychology is around 70%. And how about in uh, men who have sex with men and uh, who are HIV positive? Actually, uh, this study uh, talked about uh, they they are usually the cancer developed from pre-existing hybrid lesions, most of them. And uh, so uh, if we uh, believe in the host cascade and then uh, we target at this hybrid lesion, I'll, I'll talk about the treatment. Um, the objective is not to abort CANS altogether, but to detect them early so that we can try to reduce the uh, progression. So these are the uh, cases in which over one year, they can progress from high grade lesion, uh, the pop, this is uh, under the uh, HRA, uh, to squamous cell uh, carcinoma of the anus. This is by uh, biopsy. So uh, these are the lesions for example, uh, the hybrid lesions, uh, which shows a plantation and a monovascular pattern and, uh, and pro 
progress in terms of uh, two, around two years to invasive squamous cell can cancer. So who, who is the target group for HLA uh, in uh, UK and uh, US and uh, the, uh, Europe? Uh, the centers who, which perform this, they do usually is uh, for people who have a high risk of developing annual cancer, including both men and women who are immunosuppressed. This would be due to HIV infection or organ transplant or people on long-term steroid or other medicine which suppress their immune functions. And also women who have history of uh, cervical and uh, vulval or vaginal dysplasia. And how is this done? And this is actually an office-based uh, procedure. And uh, I, I talk about the uh, coposcope that is used. And usually I would uh, do the cytology first before I, I examine the patient and then followed by the digital and the rectal examination, which is equally important actually uh, to felt Google mask. Actually, I would recommend all our, all our, all our physicians are taking care of immunosuppressant patients to do at least, you know, this uh, there, so-called digital and, you know, rectal exam, you know, although they are not so sensitive, you know, by the time you, you find a mask, it's quite late, but it's still better than nothing. Um, uh, and then followed by the high resolution endoscopy. And if there's a, no, any abnormal area being visualized, I will do the biopsy under a uh, local, okay? So uh, how about the position of the chairs? It's something quite interesting. Uh, in the UK, they use the lithotomy position. In uh, Netherlands, uh, they use a high lithotomy position. And in US, uh, where uh, Dr. Stephen Goldstone, which, who is one of the most uh, uh, respected person in the field, he used the lead chest position. The patient just kneel on the chair and then exposing the, the, the the buttock and then at the end of the chair. And then in, in uh, Australia, they are doing a lateral position. Actually, I found this, uh, of course, it's according to the habit of the operator, but the lithotomy position, especially with the end of the chair tilted up, you know, is a good thing, good, good uh, way to visualize the, uh, the SCJ because all the, all the, uh, rectal fold tends to gravitate to the other end to less obscuring the view, you know, that's my, my experience. But of course I'm trained in the, uh, mainly in the lipotomy position, so I, in Hong Kong I'm also doing the, in the lipotomy position. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, for treatment or for the uh, high grade lesion, you may ask uh, what we can offer to these cases. Uh, usually uh, for very limited uh, uh, extent of the uh, involvement, we would uh, offer either imipimo aldara, this is a immunomodulating uh, ointment for patients to put on for like uh, three times per week for two to uh, three, three to four months, but people might have uh, some irritation. But in, uh, usually the response is quite good, but the thing is that uh, there is a high chance of recurrence because HPV is a bill effect. What you can see is only the part that is uh, props up, you know, the, 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 the pathology. But the other, other areas may also be impacted by HPV. So metachronous uh, 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 recurrence is uh, a, a problem. The other, other um, modality of treatment that can be uh, uh, offered to these people are ablative. They can in form of uh, infrared coagulation or uh, biotherapy or laser or electrocautery or hypertension. In US, actually, uh, in uh, Dr. Goldstone's uh, uh, office, he's using hypertension. Mm -hmm. And then in uh, London, where I work, is uh, we use uh, laser. So uh, usually it's a combination of operation and uh, uh, Topical, but we have to be mindful because if uh, the, the extent of the lesions is quite extensive, we do not do it in one go, you know, otherwise for abrasion there may be stenosis, you know, and so we have to do it in a phase approach. And uh, so when it should be done, 
actually uh, for cytology screening actually is easy. It, it can be done uh, at any time. Uh, but the thing is uh, for any abnormality, we have to prepare that the patient will have to have, have the HRA as the further investigation. Otherwise, we, may, we might just stop there, you know, and then we don't know what, what's happening inside the anus. And so uh, there are uh, different guidelines uh, in, uh, uh, and by international um, uh, organization, one of which, for example, the ACE Institute of New York State Department of Health uh, recommend uh, the like screening with an anal screening uh, a, a cytology first and then uh, they will perform uh, for HRA for any uh, abnorm abnormal uh, cytology even for ASCUS you know and <clears throat> for grade one this uh, AIN one they will follow up one year later with HRA and for grade two or three they will treat and follow up in six months time so <clears throat> the optimal uh, Follow-up strategy is still to be uh, 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 found out by a randomized controlled trial, which is now uh, being undertaken. But uh, many of these uh, international society, for example, the Transplant uh, Society of America, already issued some uh, statement on HPV uh, in solid uh, organ transplant recipient that uh, they should be screened for HPV associated. Uh, cancers and it's of course if we screen them too early it may, be, may not be too cost effective because as we know from the cascade it takes time for uh, even for the high lesions to become the uh, uh, cancer but it was found that a screening about the age of 35 or 40 will be uh, cost effective but again the optimal uh, timing will depends on the randomized control trial, which is to be uh, is being undertaken now in the U.S. across uh, many centers and among HIV positive uh, men and women. And uh, is uh, two arms. One is just observation. One is uh, with treatment with the uh, the hybridization being uh, removed by ablation. So we will know the definite answer after this trial is being published in two to three years time. So uh, implication for our clinical practice, I think one of the most important thing is uh, the efficacy for uh, HPV infect, uh, vaccination. Uh, it should, should really be encouraged across the lifespan because it's the vaccination in the early age, like the, before any such activity, which is the most uh, uh, effective. But regardless of sexual history of a uh, history of a normal pap smear uh, or even sexual orientation, it can be offered to people through six, 26 years old. Actually, uh, FDA approved up to 45 years old. And even actually in UK where I work, we are offering HPV vaccine to all people who come down with AIN, you know, because these people are already in a high risk group. The fact that they are more exposed, you know, they are more prone to further HPV infection. Even, of course, uh, for the types which have, uh, are already exposed, it's not effective in preventing them. But they can be prevent other types, you know, so that they will, will not add to the uh, oncogenic effect. You know? And uh, so uh, this is more off-label use, but uh, I would recommend uh, people to use the golden opportunity to vaccinate the appropriate people. And uh, also for tertiary prevention, I think uh, there is one of the things that all of us can do, you know, uh, uh, because uh, people, if they are for anal cancer, maybe the oncologist here that will know better than I do, if they, uh, the, the, the later the diagnosis, the, the poor the prognosis, and also actually that is quite, uh, uncomfortable for chemo radiotherapy for anal cancer, you know, and not to talk about the uh, uh, stoma uh, in, in more advanced disease that people are subjected to. And uh, in general, anal cancer, they are ca uh, can uh, cancer which are diagnosed quite early, like 60s, and uh, actually one third of the people are less than 15 years old. 
And so is uh, cervical cancer in the 40s in general, in the median age, as compared to other uh, cancer, the median age of diagnosis are like uh, late 60s or 70s. So the, all doctors of uh, concerned specialties, uh, gynecologists, HIV physicians, transplant physicians, rheumatologists, dermatologists, and also even family physicians or emergency physicians, I think, uh, at least I think the, our first step is to be aware of uh, occurrence of this uh, condition. And so don't uh, just uh, uh, disregard it as uh, like uh, something trivial uh, because that might mean uh, missing some something major. So uh, the take home message is uh, anal cancer, the rate is rising all, all over the world and also in Hong Kong. It's also more common in women and men. Um, immunosuppression of any types uh, is a major risk factor, especially in HIV positive people. And uh, people who have been treated with uh, cervical cancer are also at risk, even after successful treatment of the cervix uh, cancer. And uh, in highest of high risk group would be the HIV positive MSM, especially who have the high risk type virus. So um, I I uh, there there is uh, if you are interested to know more about uh, this procedure and the rationale uh, next month the medical diary there will be an article on that uh, you are welcome to have a, a look and also uh, later uh, next week there will be an um, international conference on papilloma virus and it will be a virtual, virtual conference and I will attend this virtual conference and summarize the uh, findings.